Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here to talk about my favorite romances that I read in 2022. Um, so as you guys have seen, I am splitting up my favorites into different genres and categories because I read a lot of books and I have a lot of favorites to talk about, which is a great problem to have, and I just think shorter videos will be better for everybody. <laughs> so let's just jump right into it. I will put content warnings in the description box as well as any links that I mention or um, anything like that. So coming in our last sp spot, I have two books that are tied and you could either consider these like an honorable mention or like the first spot on this list, the lowest spot, um, and that is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy and Unmask Me If You Can by Shauna Galen, uh, which I also own but I just don't have with me right now. Um, so I did really enjoy both of these books. I gave them f both four stars. The reason that I kind of put them in this in-between category is even though I enjoyed a lot of things about them, the actual romance wasn't one of those things. Um, I Like I just didn't have I didn't get really excited about shipping the characters, you know? And I feel like for a favorite list, like even though I can really enjoy romances where the actual romance piece isn't as big a deal for me, um, I think that for a favorites list that should kind of be an important consideration. I don't know, that's my thought process, um, but I did really enjoy both of these and I would highly recommend both of them. Um, if the Shoe Fits is a contemporary retelling of Cinderella um, that I obviously really enjoyed. I loved our main character Cindy, it also has plus size rep, um, and I really loved the like family relationships and the fact that the step family is like not evil in this version. I really loved the way that fashion was used and talked about and how clothing matters and it's not it's not just like the superficial thing, you know, it, it is like an important part of people expressing themselves um, and showing that they love themselves. And I really like that this wasn't a journey of Cindy accepting her body. It was like other people realizing that they needed to or she was going to move on. And I think that's great. Um, I also really enjoyed the female friendships here. Um, as I said, one of the only things that didn't work for me is the romance itself. I just feel like the love interest was super bland. Like I wanted him to end up with Cindy because I loved Cindy, but um, I didn't get like super excited about their romance or anything, but still very good. Um, and then Unmask Me If You Can is one where, like as I said over and over in the reading vlog where I featured both of these books, um, I just think the consent in this book is fantastic. I think for books in general, that's exciting. For romance books, it's exciting, and especially for historical romance books, because in my experience, my very limited experience, I feel like, I don't know, the consent can be kind of iffy sometimes, um, especially with a historical context where if it's a male character and a female character, there is already so much of a power imbalance, um, and I love the way this book looked at that. Um, there are big content warnings for this one for past sexual assault, um, so do know that going in, but I think the way it was handled was done with so much care and thoughtfulness, and I loved the way the hero, like, really understood the heroine. As I said in my um, video review, it's kind of sad that this is like such a big deal because like it really shouldn't be that hard, high of a bar, but um, he never pushed her, he never pressured her, he never even acted disappointed. If they were having some kind of romantic moment um, or intimate moment and she like st said stop or pull back or anything, um, he like never even acted disappointed and he just cares so much about her and I really loved seeing um, seeing our heroine heal, and then also our hero, I'm sorry, I think his name is Jasper, I can't remember character names as well because I read this one quite a while ago, um, but I really loved how we also see him kind of, uh, like, learn to, like, heal and accept himself because he has a scarred face and he has been, he's kind of, like, convinced himself that that makes him, like, unlovable, and some people definitely do treat him badly because of that, so I just really loved the way this book handled, like, the themes and the, the elements of healing. Um, I won't get into, like, a heavy, like, plot synopsis or anything. Um, I will link that romance reading blog down below if you want more information, but I thought this was fantastic. It's kind of an interesting one because, like I said, I didn't get like super excited about shipping the romance, but I loved the way the romance piece of this was handled, if that makes sense. I know that's a very, <laughs> that sounds like a very small distinction, but like to me it feels different. It's like I love the thoughtfulness and the consent and like all of the things about the actual like romance plot. Um, even if like the actual character interactions, I was like, this is fine, you know, like the romance between them. So anyway, that was my kind of like last category or like honorable mention category. Um, I also think it's kind of funny slash sad that all of my like actual favorite books, uh, none of them were in the romance vlog where I was trying to find what I like in romance because uh, I know what I like. I'm just not good at finding it. So I don't know what that says, but that's just kind of funny. 
Okay, so coming in at spot number five, um, I have Once Upon a Forbidden Desire. Um, I can't remember who edited that, but I will put that in captions. And this is a, a collection or an anthology by a bunch of different indie authors who are writing fantasy romance, and these are all retellings. And um, I will link the wrap-up where I go more into depth on the stories that I read in this collection, because I didn't read all of them, I skipped around. Um, and I really appreciate the, like, thorough, like, content and, like, trope notes and everything. Um, there's also a wide variety of, like, steam levels, which I think is cool as well. Um, but yeah, there were some real highlights in this collection for me. I especially really loved AJ Lancaster's story, uh, which I have read a full-length novel by her that I did really enjoy, um, but I was really blown away by how much I loved the short story from her. It's a Cinderella retelling that I think was so clever and interesting and creative and has one of the most convincing romances I've seen in a Cinderella retelling. Um, I just really loved that. And then I also really loved the one by Colleen Cowley, who I loved her subversive series, so it's not a surprise that I really enjoyed that one. Um, but I really loved the her Rumpelstiltskin retelling. I thought that was super great. The tension, um, I loved the, like, magical element and the conflict between these characters. So what I especially recommend those two stories, but like I think that pretty much whatever kind of fantasy romance you like, like no matter what tropes or like, um, you know, steaminess level, I think you'll probably find at least a couple things that you enjoy. Um, and there were also several like pleasant surprises for me. Like there was a Rapunzel retelling. Um, I'll put the author on the screen or in the captions. And I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed that one. And I really liked the way that it took some of the elements of the original story um, which are, you know, not great on consent, and actually used that, kind of like reclaimed that, to give the female character a lot more agency. I thought that was very cool. Um, there's also like a fairy godmother one that was fun. I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting, but check out that wrap up if you want more thoughts on individual stories, but um, that is in my number five spot. I did really enjoy that one overall. And I also gave that collection four stars overall. Um, then <laughs> some people are going to be maybe mad at me for putting this on this list because a lot of people would consider this women's fiction as opposed to romance. The reason I am listing all of these together um, is for one thing I don't have nearly enough to like make it worth it. Like I only have one women's fiction I think on this list and also I consider this to be like, I count it for me as a romance book because even though there is a bigger emphasis on the internal character development and character growth and all of that, um, which I know can be associated with women's fiction, even though there is a bigger emphasis on that than in maybe genre romance, um, I am listing them together because in terms of the external story thing that you are waiting to be resolved, that is still a romance plot. Does that make sense? Um, so that's why I'm including this one here. Um, and that is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Um, this got, I think, very mixed reviews, and I think part of it was expectations because, again, this is not maybe what people would consider a traditional genre romance. Um, and also, I think it's a lot heavier than you would maybe expect from the premise and the cover. Um, this book does deal with uh, past abusive relationship and trauma from that, um, and also it deals a lot with, like, incarceration um, and... I, yeah, it, ha it handles a lot. So again, check content warnings. This is not, like, even though the romance is, like, very sweet and I really loved it, um, and it is, I think, very heartwarming, the overall story does have some heavy moments. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. I would highly recommend the audio, even if you're not usually an audio person, like I am. Like, I'm not, <laughs> you guys know, I don't usually like audiobooks, but, um, I really loved the way that this one was done. Um, Kwaku Fortune was the male narrator who has a beautiful voice, and Carrie Hope Fletcher was the female narrator who also has a great voice, and I just, I listened to that as I read along, and I, like, did not want to stop listening to it, which very rarely happens for me with audio, so would definitely recommend that, um, and especially because the, um, like, Leon's chapters are written in a very deliberately kind of choppy style, and I think reading that physically would have frustrated me, but listening to it was great. Um, I haven't told you anything about what this is about, but this is basically um, a flat share situation where where Leon, um, our hero, he needs a he needs a roommate in order to make ends meet. He works a night shift at the hospital. Um, I think he's a um, a palliative care nurse, which I also really enjoyed seeing that element talked about a little bit. Um, so he works the night shift. He's like, well, somebody could basically have the apartment to their to themselves for like most of the time. And Tiffy is our heroine, and she ends up needing a place to stay. And so even though it's a very weird situation, um, that like they're these two roommates are never gonna meet or, or anything, and they like even share the same bedroom and like bed and everything. Like even though it's a weird situation, they both have reasons for. Um, why they need to do it, which I think, like, even though the premise is kind of out there, I feel like Beth O'Leary did a pretty good job of, like, setting up circumstances that made it more believable. Um, so anyway, they, like, start communicating to each other through notes, and then, of course, they end up, 
um, just like connecting to the other person a lot more than they thought. And um, yeah, I really loved this. Like I loved the romance. I loved the characters. Um, this is another great book for consent, I feel like. Um, like Tiffy has gone through some very difficult things in previous relationships. And again, Leon never pushes her. He never even acts disappointed because that's another big thing that I feel like doesn't get talked about as often. It's not just like does the character stop what they're doing um, immediately, but do they do they do it without indicating that they're upset or disappointed or without trying to make the other person feel bad or anything um, or even doing that unintentionally. So I loved Leon. He's like the sweetest man. I He is I think the only contemporary hero to make my book boyfriend shelf. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and I loved Tiffy as well. Um, one of the reasons I loved the audio narration is I feel like she's the kind of character who could maybe come off as overly quirky, but Carrie Hope Fletcher narrated her so well that she just felt very genuine. Um, so yeah, I know this is a very polarizing book, it seems, but I personally really loved it. In spot number three, I have Daisies and Devotion by Josie S. Kilpack. Um, this is a surprise when, and you, maybe we'll see, you'll see why when I get to the tropes, um, but this is the second book in the Mayfield family series, and this is a proper romance. Um, so this doesn't have any explicit scenes, um, if that is something that you're looking for. And also a great example of how you can have romances with great chemistry that don't necessarily have that. Like being a proper romance doesn't mean that it's not a well done romance, you know? Um, so anyway, this has been my favorite in the series so far, which is shocking to me because this is Friends to Lovers. And you guys know I'm a very, very hard sell on Friends to Lovers. Um, it's not, a, it's, I would say it's generally one of my least favorite romance tropes. There are some books that are exceptions. I am finding more exceptions, but in general, it's not a thing that's really for me. Um, so I am so pleasantly surprised that I love this one so much. We are following Timothy and Marianne, um, and Timothy is trying to, he has to marry a wealthy woman, basically. Um, but he's really going about it in the kindest way he can. Um, he really does want to marry somebody who they genuinely like each other and get along with. Um, he wishes he could marry for love, but he's at least going to make sure that um, it's somebody that they could, you know, care about each other. And then suddenly his uncle gives him a kind of inheritance, I guess. Like, his uncle hasn't died, but he, like, gives him a bunch of land and, like, property and money and stuff so that now Timothy can actually be independent and um, not have to worry about money. And he's really happy because he can finally, like, marry without thinking about a financial consideration. Um, and he had been about to propose to our heroine, Marianne, because um, she's very wealthy and she's kind of, like, the one who he got along best with. Um, but now he doesn't have to worry about marrying for money, so they decide that they're just going to be friends, even though Marianne maybe still likes him more than he likes her. Um, and Timothy is so excited now to like find the woman of his dreams. He has this list of attributes that um, Marianne thinks is absolutely ridiculous. Like she's like, you're never going to find somebody like this. So they make a bet. She's going to prove to him that this perfect woman doesn't exist and he's going to set her up with somebody um, as a match because Marianne does want to find a suitor, but um, even though she's very wealthy, she's not as traditionally beautiful and charming as um, some of the other debutantes. So they have, they set up this deal with each other. Um, and then a woman comes to town who actually does seem to be Timothy's ideal, but maybe that's not who he wants anymore. Um, I just love this so much. You guys know I do really love the like matchmaker trope and different variations on that, so I loved that here. Um, I really enjoyed Marianne and Timothy as characters, and even though Timothy can, he, he did a couple things that were frustrating, and he can be a little, uh, he, he, I don't know, he doesn't, he doesn't always like think things through, but I still really liked him, and I really appreciated that he is a genuinely good person, even when he does make mistakes. Um, and I loved Mary Ann. I loved the emphasis on female friendship here. Um, I shared a quote about, like, how much, like, I, I shared a quote from this book about um, her, like, finding like companionship with the women who, the other women who are in the London season rather than thinking of them as enemies and I loved that. Yeah, it just really enjoyed like the characters uh, separately and together. Um, I just thought this was really lovely and I enjoyed the way the ending came together. Um, it like wasn't quite a perfect book for me. I gave it four and a half stars because there were some parts I think I wanted a little more for um, or more from and also I still don't like Uncle Elliot and I resent that he was a, like still in this book. Um, but overall I loved this and I gave Daisies and Devotion four and a half stars and it is my third favorite romance I read this year. And in my number two spot is yet another example <laughs> of how uh, sometimes star ratings do not indicate ranking in favorites lists um, because that is The Romantic Agenda by Claire Khan, um, or Claire Khan, which I gave four stars. So theoretically this should be lower on the list but 
it's not <laughs> like I just even though there are more issues I have with the storytelling of this book I just the, the romance just made me so happy um and I loved it so much that it's still a number two so this is a romance with an asexual heroine um which I think is great we really don't see that a lot and her name is Joy and she has been desperately in love with her best friend Malcolm for years um and she thinks he's finally maybe gonna make a move ask her out and instead he invites her on a vacation where he's gonna propose <laughs> to another woman and she's like not really excited about this but she she does end up going um, and she ends up spending a lot of time with one of the other friends who was invited um, who is this guy named Fox and he decides that he wants to help her uh, because Joy is kind of thinking like the reason she went on this trip is that she's kind of thinking like okay this is her last chance to you know tell Malcolm how she feels and see you know if he reciprocates because he's not, I should have said he's not actually proposing like an engagement to this other woman he's basically like declaring that he really likes her and like wants to I guess um, like go out more officially I don't remember how they described it but she's not like trying to break up an established couple or anything um and so Fox is like hey we should make him jealous by pretending to date so there is a little bit of fake dating here which I loved and yeah I just the writing of this one was sometimes clunky I think some of the storytelling choices were odd so like like I was saying there are more reasons that there are more issues I had with the story of this one um and I give it four stars but I just loved the main characters so much like the romance I adored like it just made me so happy once again you're seeing a theme here there was great like consent here um and even though Fox didn't always understand um like because he's not asexual um he's allosexual and even though he doesn't always understand immediately what Joy means or what she's talking about where she's coming from he does try really hard to like do better and understand and so even when there's like a couple of times he says you know kind of ignorant things that Joy calls him on um he does do better and I really liked that and I also just found this super romantic I loved their scenes together I loved the fake dating um I really liked Joy as a character and how like fun and confident she is um she's also in her 30s which it's cool that we see that because I feel like in romance we don't see a lot of like it's just it's less common to see characters in their 30s as the romantic leads um even though 30s is obviously still young um and i also really liked her interest in clothing and the way that was handled and also one of my favorite things for this book and one of the reasons it, it is rated so high on my list is um fox himself as a character he is kind of a grump in terms of like a grumpy sunshine dynamic but he's one i actually like um, I, I'm realizing that even though there are things about the grumpy sunshine trope that I should enjoy, a lot of times I don't because a lot of times the grumpy character just comes off as kind of an asshole. Um, and Fox is not like that. Like, he is very reserved and he can come off as very standoffish and grumpy, but he's, like, you, you end up realizing that he's, like, just quiet. <laughs> And I just, he's like a really wonderful, caring person. I loved him so much and I loved him and Joy together. So that's why it's number two on my list, even though there are like things with the writing and some of the story elements, like the plot stuff was like not always as smoothly done, but I love the romance. And then finally, the book in my number one spot is an Avon title. Um, and Avon is part of HarperCollins, which are at the time of filming this still, their union is still on strike uh, because HarperCollins hasn't even like responded to them, um, much less like come to the bargaining table. They have um, given further guidance on like reviewing and including a HarperCollins titles and they said for like end of year videos um, you can mention and like you know include HarperCollins books but they do ask that you uh, continue to mention the strike and that's what I'm doing now. I will link information about that down below. Um, this is an Avon title and I can't remember if Avon, there's like a couple of romance imprints that are not part of the union so I can't remember if this is officially one of those or not but regardless um, um, it's good to be aware of the strike and I do still support it even if this title is not one of the ones affected. So information will be in the description box and my number one favorite romance of the year, the only romance book that I gave five stars to this year is So This Is Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I loved this so much and you actually haven't heard me do an actual review on this one in my wrap-ups because again holding reviews for HarperCollins titles um, but I love this. It just made me so happy. And it's kind of funny that this was my absolute favorite of the year because it does not have great reviews on Goodreads. I think it was at like a 3.5, which is pretty low, I think, for Goodreads. Um, so I guess a lot of people don't like this, but it was perfect for me. I really loved it. Um, this is a contemporary romance that is in, it's like the third in a like royalty romance series, which you guys know. I don't like royalty romance. This was the only one I was interested in because it's basically not a royalty romance. Um, the hero is actually like a manager almost. I forget what his job title is, but he runs things behind the scenes for the royal family. So he's not actually one of the royals at all. And his name is Mateo. Um, and then our heroine is named Kara, you know, great name. And um, she is a kind of 
like financial or like management consultant who gets brought in to this small country in Europe um, to basically help them with their GDP and um, like just kind of just kind of look into their like production and everything because they are a very small country and they have basically one industry that most of their money comes from and it's not doing so well um, and so the two of them have very good reasons for like not hitting it off especially on Mateo's side because he's really worried that Kara is going to come in and fire a bunch of people shut things down and she's trying to make him understand that like she was hired to like look at productivity and that she's like you know there's no way that you can continue to run this business and to keep these people employed with the way things are currently running um and so yeah the two of them are they kind of like Mateo sort of gets like roped into being her like guide around um like the the tours and the factories and different things and of course they end up going to more like fun places as well um and I just love this like you can probably tell from the way I'm smiling but this book just made me so happy and I read it all in one night and I have not done that with a romance book since The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren which was like two or three years ago um I just like could not put this down this is the kind of romance book where I'm like oh this is why people say they read romance really fast because like I just did not want to put it down I wanted to see them get together yeah I really loved it. I really loved how much they respect each other and even though this is kind of an antagonist to lover situation or it definitely is at the beginning um they're never like nasty to each other they always respect each other and they have believable reasons for not getting along with the other person right away. Um, I also loved the emphasis on family, um, how close Kara is to her family and how close Mateo is to his. Um, I also loved like the Christmas elements and the coziness and like the setting. Um, and I also think this book did a pretty good job of balancing the like cheesy elements with making some parts of them more believable. Like there are definitely, you know, parts of this like tr premise or like these tropes that are like, you know, a little silly or a little out there. Like you sometimes, you often find in these like royalty romances. Um, but there are elements that I think Jenny Holiday actually did like do some good kind of background or setup for like, you know, thinking about based on where this country is located, what languages would people probably speak here? Um, things about like the, you know, the GDP of this country and like how much money they can feasibly make from something like this. I also really loved seeing Mateo and Kara like work together on various projects. Um, like seeing them join forces was really exciting. Um, I really loved some of the romance tropes here. Like I just, yeah, it made me so happy. I loved it. I gave it five stars. Um, it's also kind of like a slow burn, I feel like. So that's another thing I love. Yeah, this is obviously one that is not working <laughs> for everybody, but I loved it so much and it is my favorite romance that I read in 2022. So those are my favorite romances that I read. Um, I should have mentioned that they are not necessarily books that came out in 2022. Um, I think a couple of them are, but a lot of them aren't. So please let me know if you have read any of these or if you're interested in them. Let me know a favorite romance that you read this year or this last year, I should say. Um, yeah, as I said, I am still not reading a ton of romance, but I am getting better, I think, at finding the romance I enjoy because I have very strong preferences <laughs> about what I do and don't like in romance. So it's not like I need to figure that out. I just need to get better at finding them. Um, again, I will link that vlog if you want a little more information about that journey or that quest. But yeah, I definitely want to check out some of Jenny Holiday's other books now. Probably not those Royals books, but like other series maybe. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any romance recommendations for me based on the ro romances that I really loved here. I'd be very excited to hear. Although again, I do think it's pretty funny that like none of my actual favorites were the ones that I picked for that vlog that I hoped I would really love. Oh well. Is there a lesson in there? I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!